Printing is very interesting because printing removes probably 70% of the traits that we can find. And printing brings in one trait really strongly, which is intuition. If you see lots of spaces between letters, those are intuitive breaks. So when you have printing that, you know, if you have a letter I or a letter T, so we take something like we go Mike, and I would typically lift the pen to dot the I, maybe after the I, or people will go uh, write something like um, cat, and they, they lift the, okay, cattle, how's that? They're lifting the pen off to cross the T. This wouldn't be an intuitive break. It wouldn't be an intuitive break after an I, a T, or a J because you have to typically lift the pen, or usually do. But if I write Mike like this, with too many humps in the end, that's a sign of psychosis, not do it again. Um, so here we have, here we've got an intuitive break after the K and the E. And there's no reason for it to be there. I could flow into it. Every time the person's lifting their pen, they're running intuition instead. And they're, they're stimulating that. In fact, um, Really creative people will often have this in their writing. My wife has all kinds of intuitive jumps in her writing. And so we see with printing lots and lots of intuition, but not much else shows. It's also the printing of uh, the writing of deception because when you print, people intuitively know they're not giving away much information about themselves. My father was an um, electrical engineer from England and he could print, he was a draftsman first, and he could print, it looked like it came out of a typewriter and he could do it very fast because that's just what he did all the time. But um, printing will tend to hide your traits. Now, if you give me a sample of handwriting, or if someone does, the old model used to say, make them write cursively, because that's where the traits are. But the new model says, if they don't write cursively, why make them do it? It's not even their real handwriting. Question? Printing with lower and uppercase letters. Printing with lower and uppercase letters. A lot of that depends, actually, on which letter it is. And that's a very intriguing thing. Here's an interesting trait. When someone makes write something like this, a word like like. Notice, even though it's cursive, it's not printed, it answers the same question. What's unusual about this other than the downward depressive slant? Yeah, this is a capital K used amid small letters, the alphabet. This is very, very common, and it's a really fun trait. My wife has this in spades. It's called the go to hell K, or the F-U-K. <laughs> and people who have this in their writing are extremely resistant to being controlled by um, inappropriate authority. If you, <laughs> there he is again. <laughs> if you get large letter Ks in your writing where they don't belong, even where the buckle is higher in it, large letter K, the bigger it is, the, the more they will resist authority. They'll have problems at work with their boss. My wife and I were in Newmarket, Ontario, north of, north of Toronto, for lunch one day. And you know restaurants often have the blackboard with the daily special on it? And they had that. And in the daily special, my wife says, look at the frickin' K. It was a huge K where it shouldn't be. So the waitress came over to take the order, and I said, um, excuse me, do you know who wrote that blackboard? She said, uh, yeah, Amanda, the other waitress. I said, uh, does she have issues with the boss? She went, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy, the stuff you can see. And that will never let you down. The go to hell K, the F-U-K, and if it's when you stack traits on top of each other that the real power comes in. You're not going to take one letter and make a federal case out of it. But when I'm seeing things repeatedly in the writing, over and over, that are being supported by other traits, then I'm going to know pretty well what it is with 99% sureness. 